So if we do the redistricting now, by the time the census, uh, the census happens again in 10 years, we'll actually have an accurate count of uh, what our cities and towns will be. Um, and so that's exactly what the bill would do. Yes. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, can folks hear me? Yes. Awesome. All right, good morning, everyone. I think we're going to get started. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Uh, my name is Alex Bedreau. I'm with the uh, Yale Rule of Law Clinic. Um, and thank you so much, everyone, for coming uh, to this rally and this press conference by the ACLU of Connecticut and the NAACP Connecticut State Conference uh, in support of passing SB 753 and ending prison gerrymandering. It's just really inspiring to see this great turnout from uh, so many folks and, and from uh, members of the General Assembly. Um, we have a bunch of fantastic speakers, so I want to get started. Um, but before we do, I just want to make sure we give a shout out to everyone that's come here in support uh, from the ACLU, from the NAACP, the League of Women Voters, uh, the National Veterans Council for Legal Redress, and then in particular, all our legislative champions. So I know we have uh, Speaker Ritter, uh, uh, Senator Haskell, Representative Gilchrist, Representative Hughes, Representative Lamar, Representative Farrer, uh, and uh, a number of other supporters, I think. So we're, we're so pleased uh, that everyone has showed up. So without any further ado, I think uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Speaker Ritter. Thank you. Woo! I think I can take this off and be in full compliance with CDC recommendations. So, yeah. um, Look, I want to thank everyone for being here today. I remember, I don't know, maybe 2012, I put a bill in um, when I was, I think, a sophomore legislator on this very issue around how we count persons for census and redistricting purposes. And it didn't go really well. We didn't really get out of the committee. And I think part of the problem is it was eight years ago and it was done so long before and after we had just done reapportionment and redistributing in the state of Connecticut. So what I would say to everybody here, this is the year you have to do it. Woo! What is foremost in people's minds what is most relevant, okay? I want to thank uh, President Esdale and I want to thank my, thank my good friend Corey Betts who are here as well. At the end of the day, it comes down to dignity. Right? People can talk about money and all that stuff, and that's important, don't get me wrong, right? And, and where you would add population. But if you're in a prison in a, in, in a town that you've never been to, that you have no personal uh, affiliation to, and someone tells you that you no longer count in the community that you were born and raised, 
the place you spent your entire life, the place you were educated, the place you worship. What kind of dignity is that? It takes it, in some ways, it strips it down and treats you as a number in a prison and not where you go. And the same individuals you treat with that lack of respect are the same individuals that you hope when they get out, reintegrate into the same community you said they don't even count in. <laughs> the argument against the bill has been it will impact some of these communities in negative ways. We'll work with those communities. Some have mentioned funding, for example. Hey, we'll help you, we'll work with you. It might take a little while, some years, to get used to not having the same resource potential. I don't think it's all that much money. But this is the time. So for your advocacy, I know Senate Bill 1059 is also here. You have my support of the Solitary Confinement Bill. People ask me why I don't co-sponsor bills. It's complicated. It doesn't always help the process anymore. Um, but I will tell you, you have my full support here in public. So thank you. I know there's a lot of speakers. I apologize. I have another event at 1130. But I appreciate all that you do. And let's get it done in the next few weeks. Thank you. Very much. Thank you so much, Speaker Ritter. I also wanted to recognize Senator Abrams, who is here as well. And uh, and now we're very pleased to introduce uh, Senator Leaning. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. It's great to be with you today. Uh, the prison gerrymandering bill is a critical bill this year, a critical priority. Speaker Ritter is absolutely right. It is a matter of equity and justice. We all know that. Uh, the communities where people are involuntarily in residence uh, are not in any way their true home. How many residents of those prisons are getting to serve on the town council, the board of selectmen, the library board, the board of zoning appeals, anything else that would indicate residency or a stake in those particular communities? Absolutely none. So the reality is that this year we have to pass that bill, make that change, because uh, talk about time sensitive, if we don't do it now, it won't have an impact for another 10 years until the next time uh, we have an opportunity leading into uh, into reapportionment. So it's a matter of justice. It's a matter of equity. As the speaker said, uh, other adjustments could be made to help uh, accommodate some of the towns that feel they're, they're uh, suffering a loss. But in the meantime, they have been getting a windfall uh, for so many years with them. Uh, on per capita grants, they have had a, an artificial increase in their population. The cities uh, the top six or seven cities uh, where most of the people who are in prison uh, come from have uh, seen a, an undercount because of this for years. So now is the time to make that change, to make sure that it happens this year when it counts as we are going into our, uh, our cycle on reapportionment. Uh, in addition, uh, Senate Bill 1059 uh, on the, uh, the bill dealing with uh, uh, concerns about solitary confinement, that's also a critical point. So we need to make our critical point. We need, to, uh, we need to make sure that the idea is that being in prison itself is punishment. Uh, it isn't necessary to make it harsh and unbearable. Uh, once you're there, it's already a significant deprivation yes, just to be there. So again, we have to take that into account as well. So those two bills are certainly significant priorities of the Senate this year. Uh, I know the Speaker, as he said, feels the same way. Uh, and with his leadership in the House, I'm, I'm confident in both of them this year. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Senator Looney, and we really appreciate your support. Um, now I'm really happy to introduce uh, President Scott Esdale of the uh, NAACP Connecticut State Conference, as well as uh, Corey Betts, the Criminal Justice Chair. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Once again, my name is Scott X. Esdale. I'm the state president of the Connecticut NAACP. I'm also the national criminal justice chair of the NAACP yeah. on the National Board of Directors. Uh, we fought this fight for a long time, and I've had a lot of losses, I want to be honest with you. And it's so, so uh, heartwarming to see so many young people. Let's give the young people a round of taking on this fight. I'd like to thank the ACLU, my dear friend Dave McGuire, yeah. uh, and uh, the Yale Law Clinic, Mike Wishley. Where's Mike at? Attorney Mike Wishley. Let's give him a round of applause. And the whole entire Yale Law Clinic team, they have done a wonderful, wonderful job in supporting these particular efforts. Uh, I see so many warriors out here. 
I see all the legislators. Let's give our legislators a round of applause. This is, this is uh, very exciting. Uh, but let me just tell you uh, that it's not good, I'm going to use a football analogy, just to get into the red zone. It's imperative that we get into the end zone. We have to win the fight. Just having a fight doesn't mean anything. We have to win the fight. And the NAACP has been around for 112 years, fighting the good fight. We don't win them all, but when we do fight, we win. When we do fight, we win. So the, the key is for us to fight, for us to organize, for us to mobilize, for us to hold people accountable. Don't let people sit in your face and give you lip service. We want to see action. We want to see action. We want to count every vote. And go to your legislator and see exactly where they are and find out if they're going to vote at the end of this particular fight. When we go to uh, the Capitol, when they have this uh, vote come to the floor, make sure that you go up and make sure that your legislator has the green light next to their name. This is not a game. This is real. People are being misused and abused all throughout this community and all throughout society, all across this nation. But the fight starts local. All politics are local. All politics are local. The great things that happen on the national level and watching all that stuff on CNN means nothing if it doesn't change the communities that you live in. So I thank you so much for giving us the opportunity. The NAACP supports you all 1,000%. We, we support, I want to say this also, the uh, the stop the solitary confinement bill. We support you 1,000%, Barbara. We love you and all the great workers for going. We will continue to push you. Thank you for your, letting me say a few words. And now I'm going to bring up our mighty criminal justice chair for the state of Connecticut, Mr. Corey Betts. Okay, turn the bottom real quick. Corey was formerly incarcerated. Formerly incarcerated. He went and got his associate's degree. He went and got his bachelor's degree. And in two weeks, he will get his master's degree. He got his record expunged. We're going to push him to go to law school and get his law degree. And then hopefully he'll be a lawyer serving people all throughout the state of Connecticut and throughout the world. And I'd like to thank you for giving the support around Corey. Let's continue to support him, and let's get this bill passed. All right. Good morning. Good morning. I guess I don't have to say who I am, right? Yeah. I want to thank President Extel for that introduction. I am the Criminal Justice Chair at the NAACP of Connecticut. NAACP in Connecticut is a strong supporter of passing legislation to end prison gerrymandering. This session, we have advocated on this issue for years because we see it as a core part of our agenda for racial justice and civil rights in Connecticut. Prison jury mandate denies incarcerated people meaningful representation. Incarcerated people deserve to be represented in their home, in their home communities where they have roots and family. Instead, prison jury mandate counts them as residents of communities with which they have no connection or contact, represented by legislators who don't care about them. Not only that, prison gerrymandering is a discriminatory acting, a, acting like a modern, a modern day three-fifth clause. It reduces the representation and political power of black and Latino communities in Connecticut cities like New Haven and Hartford. See their votes count for less, while largely white prison communities see their votes count for more. Think about that. That's why it is urgent that General Assembly pass legislation to end prison jury mandating this session. Let me say it again. This session. This session. Because re re redistricting will occur later in this year. Failure to act this session could lock in these injustices for the next decade. This is a once in a decade opportunity to act. The NAACP is excited about the progress of SB 753 for this session, and we'd like to thank all our supporters in the General Assembly and around the state, including Speaker Ritter, Senator Looney, Senator Flex, and those who have, those who have supported this bill. 
We now need the General Assembly to act and vote on SB 753 before the session ends. It is time to finally get rid of the, this unjust, discriminatory practice and treat incarcerated people in black communities with the respect and fairness they deserve. Thank you. I forgot to give a big shout out, and we have to give a shout out to Hope Metcalf that's worked tirelessly. Let's give a round of applause. Well deserved round of applause. Thank you. 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 Thank you
passing SB 753 is just one of the many opportunities to step into that power. So people, our elected officials, we are calling on you to recognize the disproportionately harmed black and brown communities. Hear us, see us, end prison gerrymandering now and end mass incarceration. Woo! People! Mass prison! Thank you so much, Claudine. That was fantastic. Um, and now, uh, I'm very happy to introduce someone who's been a tremendous supporter and champion on this issue, uh, this session, uh, the uh, co-chair of the GAE committee, Senator May Fletcher. Good morning, everyone. I'm so thrilled to be here with all of you today to finally make the policy of Senate Bill 753 a reality. So many of you have been working on this issue for such a long period of time, and it's been said very clearly this morning. This is a once-in-a-decade opportunity, and the state of Connecticut cannot allow the current racist practice to continue. We must pass Senate Bill 753 this year. I'm so grateful to everyone who's been working on these issues for such a long period of time and that we're coming so close in this moment to finally passing this bill. I want to thank my co-chair, Representative Dan Fox, who's been a tremendous champion for this bill for the last couple of years. And I know this morning we heard great support from our Senate President, Marty Looney, and the Speaker of the House, Matt Ritter. Thanks to them and my co-chair, we'll get this done this year. I do want to add to the conversation that I think might be a little different than any speaker that's been heard this morning is that in my Senate district there is a correctional institute and so if we pass this bill there are hundreds of people who I believe are wrongly counted as constituents of mine who will be transferred back to the place that they're actually from. I hope that all of my colleagues who have prisons in their district will recognize the unfairness of the way we've been doing this for so long, right. recognize this as an inherently racist policy, right. and support Senate Bill 753 this year. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Senator Flaxner. Um, we're also really lucky to be joined by another great advocate and champion on this issue, uh, Senator Gary Winfield. Yeah. Yeah. I feel good. Woo. Uh, thank you. I feel real good because I feel like we're going to do some good bills this year. And I know that the reason we're going to do those good bills is because of all of you who have been coming to this Capitol doing the work. The people in the blue shirts who are here every day. Woo. The people who this mask represents. Woo. The people. And I want to thank you, because I get a lot of credit for a lot of this work that you all do. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> but, I, but I just want to say that I know that it is the work that you do that really moves this policy. Because without you, if I came into this building trying to push these policies, we wouldn't be going anywhere. And so I don't have a lot of amazing things to say, because I talk all the time. I just wanted to stop by and let you know that I know that it is the work that you do it allows me to get that credit. Uh, but w whatever we're talking about, whether it's the credit or not, the important part of this is that we are going to get these things done. That's right. Yeah. That's the important. Yeah. We are going to go into that building and we are going to remind people that we're not talking about numbers, that we're not talking about imaginary people, that we're talking about real people, yeah. we're talking about real lives. And if we're doing anything, we need to be doing something about the lives of the people that these bills, the solitary confinement bill yep. or the Protect Act, and the bill that counts people where they actually go, because we know they're not going back into these communities that they're coming out of. Not only that, we know that if they tried to, people wouldn't want them. And so if you don't want them when they come out, you don't get to have them when they're in. If you don't want them when they come out, you don't get to have them when they're in. 
especially, especially since when they write letters, I'm getting the letters, and they are. So, 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 again, thank you very much for the work that you've done. It is really the reason why we stand here today on the precipice of doing some amazing things. And for, for, for as an individual, but I think my colleagues would join with me, it, it means the world to me. Because I don't know what I would be doing here if I weren't doing this work, and I couldn't do this work without you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Winfield. Um, and now I'd like to introduce the Executive Director of the National Veterans Council for Legal Redress and a great supporter on this issue, Gary Muck. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I thank you all for being here today. And uh, I think the leaders and the speakers, the advocates, the legislators, the politicians that stood here before me today, and that really meant what they said, they're really going to do what they said they're going to do. Um, I'm a resident of New Haven, and I'm a registered voter in the State House District 93, excuse me, 92. It's one of the districts that's most severely impacted by prison gerrymandering in the state. <clears throat> now, I'm here today in support of SB 753, which would abolish prison gerrymandering in Connecticut. It is high time that Connecticut finally puts an end to this unjust practice. And it's really, I can speak from personal experience uh, on how prison gerrymandering unfairly counts incarcerated people in communities that have no connection to and while leaving them without representation in the communities they call home. For a time, I had family members incarcerated at Enfield Correctional Institution. And during this time that they was incarcerated, our family supported them financially. And when they were eventually released, they returned back to New Haven. Although our family was taken to the opposite sides of the state, they remained a part of our family and hence a part of our community. And that was in New Haven, and that is in New Haven. So they're not supported by or in contact with the residents of Enfield, right outside of the prison. It was an insult for them to be counted there as if they were so a member of that community. So my family story is one of, of many. I'm sure a lot of people in Connecticut can say the same thing that I'm saying here today. And it speaks to the injustice of prison gerrymandering. Overwhelmingly, the injustice, this injustice, is inflicted on communities of color. The majority of incarcerated folks in Connecticut are black and brown. But state prisons are in areas that are majority white. Not only does prison gerrymandering deny incarcerated people representation, it unfairly reduces the political power of communities like New Haven. The emotional and financial toll of having a loved one incarcerated exacts a tremendous cost in families across Connecticut, including mine, to, sub to, to subsequently have our votes watered down as a result of this incarceration is an insult to injury. It says to thousands of, of voters across Connecticut, your voices matter less. Last year, I, among, I along with my brother Conley and several other individuals in the National Veterans Council and the State Legal uh, State Conference of the NAACP with the plaintiffs in the NAACP versus Merrill, a lawsuit in which we argued that prison gerrymandering was unconstitutional under the Equal Protection Clause. While the litigation ultimately was set aside due to pandemic, we remain committed to advocating and to end this gross racial injustice. We do that by painting, excuse me, by passing this legislation in this session coming up, this session coming up, today we must pass SB 
753 this session. I said it again. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Gary. Um, next up, we have uh, Patricia Rossi uh, from the League of Women Voters of Connecticut. Right. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here representing the League of Women Voters of the state of Connecticut. 101 years ago, women won the right to vote. It wasn't given to them. It was after decades of arduous political battling. We won the vote. We won our right to be represented. A hundred years ago, suffragists started the League of Women Voters. And our commitment as the League of Women Voters is to make sure that everyone is represented. Incarcerated people in Connecticut are not represented. To count them where the prisons are built, rather than where their home communities are, denies them representation and it steals the political power of their community, of their communities, of their home communities. It makes it unable for those communities to advocate here in this building for them with the power they deserve. So the League of Women Voters, along with all of these people who have done so much work on this issue, demand that um, Committee Bill 753, which Senator, which Senator Winfield introduced, be passed this year to abolish prison gerrymandering in the state of Connecticut. Thanks so much, Patricia. And now our last speaker uh, for the event uh, from the Yale Rule of Law Clinic, uh, one of my colleagues, Daniel Key. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Daniel Key. Good morning to you. Uh, and I'm a student at Yale Law School and a member of the Peter Gruber Rule of Law Clinic. We represent the NAACP and the ACLU in the fight to abolish prison gerrymandering in Connecticut. Today, you've heard from civil rights organizations, elected officials, and Connecticut residents about why we must pass SB 753 now. Yes. I'd like to briefly add one more reason to that list. Prison gerrymandering violates federal law and state law. The U.S. Constitution and Connecticut Constitution guarantee that our democracy is guided by the principle of one person, one vote. Prison gerrymandering violates this bedrock principle by unjustly allocating more people to predominantly white prison districts and fewer people to majority black and brown communities, resulting in unequal and malapportioned districts. To make matters worse, prison gerrymandering conflicts with Connecticut law, the state requires eligible incarcerated voters to vote in their home districts. But prison gerrymandering counts incarcerated people in their place of incarceration when all of their ties, including their lawful votes, remain in their home communities. There is a simple solution to this clear violation of principles of justice and law. Connecticut should count all people in their home communities and abolish prison gerrymandering. That's right. That's right. Senator Looney and Speaker Ritter must call SB 753 for a floor vote without delay. It's time to pass this bill and finally rid Connecticut of this racist and undemocratic practice. Thank you all so much for being here. We're happy to take any questions from the press, and we very much appreciate your support. Let's get this done. Let's get it done! Woo! This session! This session! People! Not prison! People! Not prison! People! Not prison! Let's get it done! If there are no questions, I think we can activate the hype machine and just jam out for the rest of the time. Thank you all so much for being here with us today.